face. And lose the most coveted title in sports. And he's down again and in serious trouble. Last year, it took only seconds for Lennox Lewis and Michael Moore to become former heavyweight champions of the world. In September, a controversial second round stoppage marked the first defeat of Lennox Lewis's career against lightly regarded challenger Oliver McCall. Seven, eight, what is this? The WBC referee has stopped this fight. Six weeks later, Michael Moore was the victim of one of the greatest upsets in boxing history. On the right hand. An unbelievably close in right hand shot. It happens. Tonight, Lennox Lewis and Michael Moore make their first returns to the ring in their separate quests to regain pieces of the World Heavyweight Championship. So the next time someone asks you... Pardon me, do you have a second? <laughs> just remember that anything can happen. Arena in Sacramento, California. HBO Sports presents a heavyweight doubleheader edition of World Championship Boxing, featuring two former champions in their first returns to the ring. Michael Moore will take on Melvin Foster and Lennox Lewis against Lionel Butler. The second of the two bouts is scheduled for 12 rounds in the arena in which the Sacramento Kings play their home NBA schedule. A pretty good crowd turns out with its heavyweight doubleheader, which brings two former champions back to the ring for the first time since their knockout losses in 1994. Hello again everybody, I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome back to HBO's World Championship Boxing as we get ready to check in on the present and the future for two former heavyweight champions, Lennox Lewis and Michael Moore. Working with me as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. We're going to see Moore first, Lennox Lewis later on this evening, Larry, against Lionel Butler and in the wake of Lewis's second round stoppage loss to McCall last fall. Why in the world would he choose for his first comeback opponent a guy who has 17 straight knockouts of his own? Primarily because both fighters have been promised that the winner tonight will get the next shot at Oliver McCall, who dethroned Lewis. But keep in mind that the corrupt WBC made that promise. Only this week, it named Mike Tyson, who hasn't fought in nearly four years, as its top contender. For Lewis, this is sort of like the kid who falls off the horse and is encouraged to immediately get back on. If he shows he can handle a puncher like Butler, it will go away a long way to proving that he hasn't been spooked by that knockout. The question at this very moment is whether there will be a Butler to handle. The promoters have taken the very unusual step because they consider Butler to be at least unreliable of taking out a $10,000 insurance policy in the form of this backup fighter, Ray Annis, just in case Butler himself somehow gets spooked and decides this is one Butler who doesn't want to do it. It's a new one on me, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and while Lewis comes back against the relatively tough Lionel Butler, Michael Moore, who was originally scheduled to fight a man named Tim Puller, saw Puller fall out of the bout because of a broken metacarpal, and within the past week, a substitute opponent has been thrown in. His name is Melvin Foster, so Moore appears on paper to have by far the easier assignment tonight as he makes his... Another former heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis, returning to the ring for the first time since his loss by second round technical knockout to Oliver McCall last September. And Lewis will be going against the very dangerous Lionel Butler, a 261 pound fighter who comes in tonight on the strength of 17 consecutive knockouts. Meanwhile, the next big event in the heavyweight division after tonight takes place one week from tonight when Evander Holyfield will return to the ring in Atlantic City against Ray Mercer. Holyfield, of course, the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world who was regarded as having been retired because of a heart condition, now has medical clearance to come back to the ring, and he joins us live from Atlanta, Georgia. Champ, it's a pleasure to talk to you one more time, and uh, I apologize in advance for a question that I know annoys you, but 
there are a lot of people in the general public who are still not clear on what your medic medical status is and why you are being sanctioned to fight again. Clear that up for them. Well, uh, I've been cleared uh, by the doctors in Atlanta, the Emory Clinic and the Mayo Clinic. Um, they don't see that as any problem for me to go back in the ring. I've told people I'm healed, and the only thing now is for me to perform. I'm sure that once people see me perform, then I guess they will give me their clearance. Ray Mercer's had an up-and-down career, but when he's up, he represents a pretty tough opponent for a guy who has been away from the ring for 13 months, as you have. Why Mercer? Well, I came back to, uh, to uh, show the people that I'm back, and I know that to come back with uh, the average fighter, people would say, well, Evander don't, uh, wouldn't have to feel too good to beat it, these guys. So I felt that if I come back with a Ray Mercer or somebody, a uh, high quality Ray Mercer, then people would know that I'm back. And uh, I'm not just in the game to just fight someone that I could beat, which I feel that I could beat them all. I, I want to fight the best fighter. I'm trying to get to the track that I can get the championship fight as quick as possible. Do you have a plan for after the Mercer fight, or do you have to see how you perform in this one and answer some questions for yourself before you know what the path ought to be? Well, I feel that I shouldn't have no problem here. I truly feel that uh, I'm going to look impressive, and I look forward to fighting a championship fight. Uh, either the three champions out there, either, uh, either Reddit Bowie. It don't make any difference. I want to get out there and get me on title by 1996. Of course, you're just as qualified as George Foreman to comment on uh, Michael Moore having done 12 rounds with him yourself. Care to give Moore a grade and an evaluation on his comeback fight tonight? I feel that it takes two people to fight. Uh, Michael Moore came to fight, and the other guy, he fought a very defensive fight. It's hard to fight a defensive fighter. I, I think uh, you can give him a, a B. Uh, he, he did what he could. All right, Evander, thanks very much for your time. You are a... Classy guy, as always, and we wish you the best of luck as you come back to the ring after 13 months away. Thank you. All right, Evander Holyfield coming back to the ring. I think, I'm sure, George, that you'll agree that that's good for the sport for Evander to come back. Well, I think he's going to have a lot of fun, but that's a tough guy he's going up against. Just, I wouldn't just come out of the, uh, from under the blankets and fight him. <laughs> Let's get ready for Lennox Lewis against Lionel Butler. Uh, before his knockout at the hands of Oliver McCall, you used to say that Lewis, because of his size, his athletic talent, his punching power, ought to be the best of the young heavyweights. You still feel that way? I still believe that. This guy's got a lot of talent. I don't think he's let it all hang out. He's had trainers to get in there and try to teach him too much, and they've really hurt him a lot more than they've helped him. I think this guy's got a lot of potential. We haven't seen the best of him yet. All right. Well, that's what Lennox Lewis's handlers are hoping for. Of course, uh, before you go away from George, let me ask him one more question. New trainer for Lewis, Emmanuel Stewart. You think it'll make any difference? Lewis is going to be a great fighter, but I don't think it's going to have anything to do with his trainers. It's going to happen upstairs with Lewis. When he make up his mind that I'm a good fighter, I'm an Olympic champion, I can do it. Trainers help me do what I want to do. One thing you have to admire about Lewis, he's willing to fight tough opponents. He's got another one tonight in Lionel Butler. Now, Larry, you pointed out at the top of the show that there was a standby fighter here, Ray Annis, in case for whatever reason Butler didn't make it to the ring. What in the world is the story on Lionel Butler? Well, it won't appear on the back of a Wheaties box, I can assure you of that. Uh, and that's not because of a misspent youth, much of which was spent in prisons, nor the fact that in a way, in and out of the ring, he resembles Mike Tyson. It's because Lionel Butler has a drug problem. Only a year ago, he was suspended because he couldn't pass a drug test by the California Boxing Commission. He doesn't deny all of the stories about him having drug problems. A member of his entourage has said that his training camp was really camp crack. After knocking over people left and right with lefts and rights, he suddenly disappeared about a year ago, and nobody knew what to make of that one either. So he is some kind of a dangerous cocktail of aggression, of, of real punching power and in a sense Jim he's a tougher opponent at least going into the fight for Lennox Lewis than Oliver McCall looked going into their fight says a lot when you consider what McCall was able to do to Lewis so another question mark to pop up in the Lennox Lewis career which abounds with question marks most of them about the fighter himself 
can he, once and for all, unleash all of that enormous potential and become the great fighter so many of us thought he could be? As an Olympic gold medalist, Lennox Lewis proved to the world that in headgear, he could fight. Four years later, he went up against Razor Ruddock and with a devastating second round knockout, catapulted himself into the ranks of legitimate heavyweight contenders. We have a great new heavyweight on the boxing scene. Two months later, Lewis became WBC heavyweight champion when Riddick Bowe relinquished that organization's belt. Unfortunately, Lewis's title defenses as WBC champ were nothing more than mediocre. And many experts feel his skills have vanished. Lewis only want to land one good right hand at a time. Lewis's newspaper critics were equally unkind. Lennox Lewis has reached a point in his career where he's like a man trying to ice skate across the Gobi Desert. Okay? He's got the wrong tools, the wrong approach, and he ain't going to get there. I think Lennox Lewis's problem is Lennox Lewis, that um, he really doesn't have a passion for fighting, a fire in his belly, and I think it's been reflected in what you've seen in his career development, which has been negative development. So Lewis has become one of the biggest disappointments in a disappointing heavyweight division. Ali Dunlap, Lewis's camp coordinator for two and a half years before a recent departure, believes Lennox might have tried to do too much by himself. Lennox runs his show and he wants to run his show and he's going through a, a macho thing. Uh, I'm the man, you know, I do what I want to do when I want to do it. Someone has to be able to tell you no. Lennox has no one in his camp that can tell him no. That's one of the problems. For their part, Lewis's remaining close associates blame former trainer Pepe Correa. They say the problem wasn't Lewis's inability to learn, but Correa's inability to teach. Dunlap, who cut his boxing teeth working with Sugar Ray Leonard, says Correa gets a bad rap. Lennox will not turn himself loose and let himself be trained. You know, I've been around the sport a long time, and I've watched some pretty good trainers, you know, Dundee, Janks Morton, you know, I mean, I've been around some pretty good trainers. And Pepe is telling Lennox what to do, how to do it, and it's right. Like, he's stubborn. If he decides, I don't want to do it that way, fine. Lewis definitely has the arrogance common to champions. His loss to Oliver McCall cried out for a scapegoat, and Pepe Correa took the fall. Six, seven. Win, lose, or draw, Lennox Lewis was going to change his train after the McCall fight. Um, I think the problem relate back to the Razor Ruddick fight. When Pepe was brought in, Lennox won the Razor Ruddick fight on that right-hand punch. And all Pepe taught him was to go right-hand crazy from then onwards. He couldn't communicate with Lennox in the gym. Ironically, the new trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, was in McCall's corner the night Lewis lost his title. Now it will be Stewart's job to help Lennox get it back. But can Stewart accomplish the bigger task of activating Lewis's vast, untapped potential? Lennox Lewis, as he was in the past, was not really that bad. It's basically that he was pretty much a one-punch fighter. In the future, we're hoping that you will see a Lennox Lewis that will utilize his left hand a lot more uh, with a jab and hook uh, and to punch more in combinations, to have a lot more upper body movement, to be a little bit more fluid, more flexible, and, uh, and a little bit more colorful. A new trainer may have been long overdue, but there are signs in the Lewis camp that nothing has changed, and Lewis's need to call the shots may still be holding him back. Lennox has the ability to work with Emmanuel, but the key to that question is, will he work with Emmanuel? I hope he does. It takes a mature fighter to admit his mistakes. It takes more than that to learn from them. That is the heart of Lennox Lewis's challenge. Tale of the tape between Lennox Lewis and Lionel Butler, two big heavyweights. You see that Lewis at 6'5", weighs 248 pounds. That's 10 pounds more than he weighed when he fought against McCall. He'll have a 10-inch reach advantage against Butler, who weighed in at 261. Larry? A fighter's weight is a sort of declaration of attitude and intentions. Butler's intentions seem to be to go to feed whatever demons he has. And Lennox Lewis does not evoke confidence coming in 20 pounds heavier than when he 
stopped Razor Ruddick in a career-changing fight two and a half years ago. Punch stat numbers, Larry. Here are the numbers in the punch stat. You can see Butler is a very, very busy heavyweight. These numbers are a little deceiving. Butler doesn't throw a jab, but Lewis's jab in recent fights particularly has just been a radar weapon out there trying to measure his opponent for a right hand. We'll get a clue very quickly whether there's any change in him by how he throws that big, long left hand. Rules of the bout, Harold. <laughs> the Lennox Lewis Lionel Butler fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing gate count, no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Jim. So now we're ready for the entrance of these two heavyweights in what the WBC has promised is a title eliminator, even as they confuse the issue by ranking Tyson number one. You can see that Lionel Butler wasn't always a 260-pound heavyweight. Six years ago, he was a 202-pound heavyweight. He looks like a big earth-moving machine as he moves toward the ring. And I guess that $10,000 policy the promoters took out proved to be an investment that they didn't need to make. But one I'm sure they're not sorry they did. And look at that. 6, 10, and 1 in his first 17 fights. 17 and 0 with 16 KOs in his last 17. He didn't fight as an amateur, so the question is, were those first 17 fights really his amateur career and those last 17 fights his professional career. And if you were watching the feature, you remember Pepe Correa, who was Lewis's trainer, fired after Lewis's loss to Oliver McCall tonight. He will work in Lionel Butler's corner. Trainers are like lawyers. They'll take whatever side pays them. Pepe says that Lennox Lewis's problem is his heart. And once again, the record for Butler, 23-10-1 with 18 KOs, a much better fighter now than he was when he first began as a professional after doing five years of hard time in a Louisiana prison. Here comes Lewis. And there's the weight progression for Lennox. 1092 was the Ruddock fight. 1093 was the Bruno fight in Cardiff, Wales. 994 was the McCall fight in London. And now tonight, 248 pounds. He says that Emmanuel Stewart has awakened his natural instincts. We'll see. Emmanuel Stewart trained Evander Holyfield to his upset victory over Riddick Bowe. And then trained McCall, as we've mentioned, to his victory over Lewis. Also did some work with Julio Cesar Chavez in between. Like Moore, Lewis was an unbeaten fighter when he tasted defeat last fall. The record remains 25 and 1 with 21 Lewis knockouts. You got the mouthpiece? Right now, let's go to ring announcer Jim Hall for the pre fight introductions. Musk system. And the three judges assigned at ringside are Angel Guzman, Chuck Hassett, and Larry O'Connell. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action is referee Marty Denkin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Sacramento, California, this is our WBC heavyweight title elimination bout. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing red, trimmed in white, he weighed in at 261 pounds. His professional record is 23 wins, 10 losses and one draw with 18 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from New Orleans, Louisiana, introducing Lionel Butler. Butler. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, he weighed in at 248 pounds. His professional record is 25 wins. One loss with 21 wins by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen from East London, England, presenting the former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox. 
Alex Lewis. Everybody out but one. Everybody out but one. Everybody out by one. Okay, gentlemen, I told you your responsibilities, and I told you what mine is. Let's all do our job properly, okay? Good luck to both of you. Okay. Shake hands. The expectation is that Butler will rush Lewis. The question is, can Lewis hold him off until midway through the fight, when his conditioning should be better than Butler's? Something is going to happen quick, I feel. Okay. Referee wait, wait, Marty wait, Denkin wait. You know taking I'm... a little extra time to knock a towel off the ropes in Lewis's corner. Ready? Now he's ready. As Denkin gave instructions, Pepe Correa, Lennox Lewis's former trainer, stared at the former champion with hatred in his eyes, but couldn't get eye contact in return. Lennox was looking at his man, Lionel Butler. Lewis starts out throwing the jab after Butler's two initial charges. Don't gain contact, and now here comes Butler bullying in again. As Larry mentioned, George, Butler doesn't throw jabs. He just wants to get in your chest and wreak havoc. Yeah, Lennox Lewis, I heard his trainer said he needs a lot of head movement. He doesn't even need his head down that far. He should take advantage of his height, stand a little straighter up, and just do like a bull and a matador. Just stand there and move this guy, wave him out. Butler lands a right hand, and now Lewis comes back with a right cross and a right uppercut. And Lennox will have to discipline himself not to get dragged into a brawl. He shouldn't be moving at all. He should stand right there and just act as a matador. Okay, Jail, wait till he rushes, move him slightly to the side. I thought that punch by Butler might have might have dazed Lewis for a moment. And it gave Lewis the wake-up call, too. Say, I better hit this guy rather than waiting for him. A guy like Butler with all that bulk, rushing like that, he can't keep it up for three minutes. He can do it and then rest. And when he takes that rest, Lewis should be popping him with his jab. When you see Lewis paw with the jab and then try to bring the right hand over go, the top, that's the old Lennox Lewis. That style has been both good to him, as in the Ruddock bout, and bad to him, as in the McCall bout. He takes a left hand hook there. Because he's reaching down with his left jab, he shouldn't even think about going to the body unless the body presents itself up high. Butler's just so unorthodox, this is unlike any other fight. Right, George? You got it. Lewis should remember when this guy throws three punches, he's tired. You got to get him when he's resting. Lewis should not allow him to rest. Lewis looking a little tentative and once again engaging his habit of jabbing and then leaving the left hand out there. He just doesn't know how to jab. That's all there is to it. Close your, you, close your glove. As you can see, whenever Butler throws those punches, Lewis is automatically out of the way. He doesn't have to move. His height is his greatest preventative. Pre preventative. He doesn't need to run and hide. Probably his greatest defense, huh? His That's height right. is his greatest defense. The love test you're just getting a little warmed up now, okay? Keep your left hand out, but keep your right hand up. You're dropping the right hand a little too much, okay? Keep your left hand up, and when you start seeing the opportunities, let your shots go. You're going to have to get a little respect for them, and shoot that little short right hand where you're shooting it. You're not going to get hit because there's no room for it. You understand? You can't catch you out here. Just keep, keep, just keep shooting the little short shots in there. But see, you're giving him a little too much leeway now. When he pulls back and he cuts off, start to go on to him a little bit. You understand? Deep breath again. Deep breath. Fuck on me, baby. Deep breath. Hit him right in the heart. I got you, champion. Got me? Okay, I can't get it. Okay. Go down. Hit him right in the heart, champ. Just jab him uh -huh. in the heart. That's Look all here. you got to do. The overhand right to get him. Overhand right, right off the chair. You got me? Right, right. Right. Overhand right, right off the chair. You got your boy. Make sure you step Let's in with go, it. Let's go, Lionel. Move it out, Lionel. 
Lennox Lewis worked mostly off the jab in round one through only six power shots. Okay, break. You tied up. Break clean. Tall man like Lennox Lewis should never bend his knees that much. You're making yourself the same height as your opponent. Lewis punching down with the hard right hand. Break, break, Butler up, pulling up, in and tying him up again. wonder when and if Lennox Lewis is ever going to learn not to leave that left hand out there in front of his opponent, George. And his corner told him also to pick his right hand up. He's carrying it right down by his chest. Could leave him vulnerable to a left hook. That's true because with his height and his hands up, there's no way that Butler can sneak a shot in. Crowd begins to boo at the slow pace. Butler tries that left hand and takes a right and a left in return from Lewis. And a hard uppercut by Lewis. You can see that Butler, a big man, takes a shot pretty well. That's right. But this kind of fighting benefits Lionel Butler. Doesn't benefit Lewis. Lewis should be jabbing and moving. Butler, it's the only chance he has. Get off him. Get off him. No, no. Get off him. I don't want you to bend on him. So far, I've got to say, it looks a lot like the old Lennox Lewis. Oh, no changes at all. Now his jab is getting a little more snappy. Lionel Butler relying on sheer Punch aggression. Out Punch out You're clean. He can bother Lewis with those wild Break. shots over the top. Sooner or later, Lennox Lewis is going to remember who he is and what he's gone through and revert to the old Lewis of maybe three years ago. The good Lewis. This, yeah, and whip this guy. He's trying what his trainers is trying to tell him to do, and that's not going to work. Left hooks, you got a good right hand, why not use it? So you want him to go back to just using his size and his athletic and skills? And his height. Look at this foolishness. He is a fine fighter with a fine record, an Olympic champion. So you think he's gradually talking himself out of being great? Yeah, he is a great fighter. Use it. Be great. Let me explain to you. Huh? Go out there and jump on this chuck him. You gotta jump on him. Hit him in the head. Go out, jump on him and hit him in the head. And move your head when you go in and crack him to the head. You got me? Okay. You get your man if I'm telling you, but okay. you got to put it together in combination. Okay. When you make him right. bring his arm over here, bring the right hand to go right on his chin, okay? Right. Just keep working on it and break, and break it off. Break it off fast, okay? Water. But you're keeping him in the zone where you need to keep him at, okay? There's a record that can't be beat. He didn't land a punch in that box. Round, but what box and look. You got a lot of shots that you can land that you're still hesitant on, but it'll come later on, okay? Keep working the left hand. Keep him out there in that zone where we want to keep him at. Okay? And then train the left hook before you throw the right hand. What Lewis is doing that he hadn't been doing in recent fights is reverting to his natural caution. He was always a cautious counter puncher who made you commit and then got you. And that's what he's trying here. And you heard Pepe Correa telling Butler, go out there and hit him on the head, obviously. Correa is suggesting to Butler that he doesn't think his former fighter, Lewis, can take a punch all that well. Lewis presses his legs too far apart, brings his height down to the size of Butler, and if right-handed Butler has, can even if you cover it up, hurt you. Quick right hand inside by Lewis, landed. And he sticks a couple of effective jabs and remembers to bring the left hand back after throwing the jabs. Therefore, he's got a guard in place when Butler tries the wild right. He should stand a little taller. Hard to tell whether the crowd is booing Lewis 
or booing Butler for the absence of activity. Well, Butler is doing what he does best. He throws a few shots, then he rests up and gets ready to throw some more. But against most opponents, he's busier than this, George. And Lewis has been able to, that long reach, you just can't gauge how far he is away from you. And that's, that's throwing him off a little bit. Once again, Lewis comes with the right uppercut. That can get him in trouble if he doesn't remember to get himself back in position after he throws it. And he's doing a little more left hooking, which is unusual for Lewis. He's sticking out a left hook every now and then. I think that's a little something his new trainers put in there. A left hook bailed him out of trouble against Frank Bruno in Cardiff, Wales. He's proud of that punch and hopes right, to make right. more use of it in the future. Yeah, and he's using he's it as a little... on his foot, okay? All right. So he I can't help go. it. His feet are size 16. He does have some boats out there, doesn't he? He's starting to drop his hand already now. The hands are playing punching now, right? Butler landed a left hand. Lewis cracked with a right. Lincoln tells him he cannot pivot and hit. Let's touch glove. Let's touch it up. But Lewis did what he had to. And and just forget about what the referee is telling you and continue to protect yourself. Lewis looking a little more confident in there now than was the case in the first two rounds. George, what does the referee mean when you can't pivot and hit? I never heard that well, one before. Well, he did. He, he spinned him. He caught him behind the back to spin him out of the way. And it looked like he hit him, but only he was getting out of the way. The referee, I don't know what he was talking about either. And you're right. Lewis should ignore it. Should ignore it. It's the way to get out of harm's way. Lonnie, you got to start going over top with your shots. Put that stick hard downstairs. And as soon as you do, hit with the overhand right and come right back at the hook. You got to start beating this boy up. If you don't beat him up, you let him get away. You understand? Beat him to the body when you get inside close. Look, inside close. Go to you got to go He's not allowed to do that to spin. You can spin him, but you can't hit him. Okay? Okay. Right and good. After this here round, we're going to start taking the tunnel a little bit more. All right. Because he's slowing down. Keep your right hand up. Your biggest mistake is your right hand is too low. Let's take a look at that pivot move that the referee told him. Yeah, and the mistake was to do it and throw a punch. Second no out. big deal. Yeah. But he I was escaping. That was a great, that's the first time I've seen him use a spin. So far, the best thing I that Lionel face. Butler has been doing, if you'll pardon the expression, is getting cracked. Beautiful, Larry. <laughs> Round four begins, second half of our heavyweight doubleheader this evening. Lionel Butler lands a left hook and comes chasing in to try to follow it. Lennox Lewis in the black trunks, Lionel Butler in the red. Michael Moore for the unanimous decision victory over Melvin Foster in the first half of our doubleheader. If Lewis would only use his left jab to a, a little better, making the fight hard because he's not snapping his jab. Would you like to train him, George? Boy, I could really help this kid out. Right, get out. Of 133 punches thrown by Lewis in the first three rounds, 100 were jabs. Butler just not busy enough so far. Only 24 punches per round in the first three. He's been a little bit more active now in the first minute of round four. Lewis started to faint a little bit. He's doing right. You gotta deliver something once you fake. There's a good combination. And there are two good jabs. Great jabs for Lennox Lewis. If he can only keep it up. When this guy charges him, just wait until it's over and go right back to your jab. Lewis suddenly doing a lot of work with the left hand. And that is relatively new. Now he paws with the jab and springs with the right. That works against guys like Phil Jackson, time, but time. Butler is slightly above that. Marty Dinkin telling Lewis to keep his glove shut. Lewis started to pick his right hand a little better. 
Butler Angel. takes. Go ahead. Butler takes a better punch than I thought. He's taking some hard shots. He was knocked out three times in his first five fights, so Butler's been down a bunch, but not recently. Has not lost since April of 1991. Lennox Lewis has one of the best right hands in the heavyweight division. He cracks you two or three times. Boom! Two right hands right there. That hurt. When you're hit with one of Lennox Lewis' right hands, you are hit. You stand on your feet, that means you are a natural man. And Butler is trying to present the impression that he wasn't hurt. And Lewis isn't aggressive about trying to finish. No, he's being cautious. And that's the natural caution of Lennox Lewis that Larry talked about before. And that has served him in good stead to this point. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Come on, right here. You need to start taking deep breath. Come on, take a deep breath. Give me some air. Give me some air. What I told you was the truth. I told you that if you went out there and you slipped his jab into the hook, it's right there, right? You did it. You, but you got hey, to keep it up. Didn't think I was take a look at that pivot, big right hand by Lennox Lewis. Well, there's not many guys that could take a punch like that. So this is one naturally powerful man. And then he took a second one that looked even harder and a third one. But he's getting tired, and that's what Emmanuel Stewart has been waiting for. Jab, jab, keep it right there. When you sink your shot, let the shot go all right. Now, please. And let's pick it up. Push him a little bit now. He's been running in here. He's a bunch of shots. He's not going to push him. Keep it up here. Let's pick up the tempo. In round four, by punch stat numbers, Butler only tried 13 punches. Lewis landed 31 out of 55. So if the judges are looking for effective aggression, it is so far coming from only one fighter. Round five begins. Another hard right hand, and down goes Butler. Three, four, you all right? Five, get your hands up. Six, seven, eight. Come on over here. Right back. Well, that was a right-hand lead, George, and it was a pretty good idea. And the thing about it, Lewis just got to revert to what he was doing originally. Don't go trying to finish this guy, because that's his hope is to get him in the exchange. Go back, do it again. Don't start mixing it up. He starts to paw with the left. That's a bad habit that Stewart is going to have to work on. But when he paws with that left, it's because he's looking to land the howitzer over the top with the right. He just missed it there. He's had that since he was an amateur. Hold it, hold it. Great. That's the hit from behind there. That's a push, but a pretty doggone effective one. Yep, and he should be able to push a guy when he's running to him like that. Next time you push him, I'm going to take a point away. I'll push him. But Dinkins says he'll take a point away if Lennox does it again. Yeah, but that was a way to get this guy. He ran into him like a horse. I've never heard a referee talk so much in the ring in my life. What is Marty Dinkins doing? I can tell you this. This is the greatest state in the world as far as the athletic commission is concerned. They give you a good, strict examination before they allow you to fight. But referees, let's see. <laughs> they also drug test the fighters sometimes after a fight. That's wonderful, too. And they will drug test Butler and Lewis tonight. I asked Rich DeQueer of the California State Athletic Commission, are you going to drug test Butler? He said, hey, given Butler's history, wouldn't you test him? Yeah, the state, this is the best state to be examined in, just for your own general health. Lennox Lewis is dominating this fifth round, and Lionel Butler isn't putting up much aggression in return. And Lewis is being cautious. He throws the right hand and it steps back. That's wonderful. You like it, huh? I love it. And a left jab. Lennox Lewis has always had this in him. Now, keep your right hand up. You can't help but fall in love with Lewis's body and physical presence in there. I mean, he just looks like he ought to be great. And he should be great. The only problem is just not, he's an underachiever. Well, and a lot of critics say that he doesn't want to fight and isn't going to learn how to fight. 
but he's getting better here as he goes along. And that right hand might be enough to finish it. And it is. Marty Deacons is doing a wonderful job now. And the thunder is still there in Lennox Lewis's right hand. And we saw the result of a more intelligent, more cautious Lennox Lewis beating his man down and then smartly finishing him. That was a good performance for a fighter coming back off a knockout. You have to give that a very high rating. And George Foreman at the table next to us is applauding as Larry calls it a good performance. Couldn't have been said any better. Five punches thrown by Butler in round number five. Lewis threw 43. In the end, it was an ultra-dominant performance by the former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Boy, when Ronald Butler came into the ring, he sure didn't come represented by Mr. Roberts' neighborhood. And as Larry Merchant goes into the ring to try to find Lennox Lewis, we take a look now, George, at the first knocked out. That was the right-hand lead, followed by a left. That's right. He was able to land a combination and not put too much of his body out of, out of position. So he was able to do nothing but punch and not land his body there to... And now here's the finish of the fight as Lewis will first pound him into the ropes with that the right, right hand. That right hand hurt right quick. It was a matter of just finishing it. The others were just wild, but that initial right hand to finish it was just as great a right hand as I've ever seen. Watch again. That one landed flush. And Marty Denkin with what I have to think was a very good stoppage. I think so. I'd like to hear what Larry has to say about that. Well, I think Larry will agree with right. us that it was a good stoppage. I'd like to hear what Lewis think, has to say. I think more importantly, Lionel Butler thought it was a good stoppage. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to go on at all. Oh, you're back. I thought you had gone into the ring to uh, grab Lennox. Well, I'm back. I want to admire him from afar. Yeah, you've <laughs> gotten your chance. Let's take a look at final punch stat numbers and... Uh, they reflect Lewis's dominance in the fight, but we told you at the beginning that Butler was an active heavyweight. Tonight he was not, and I have to think, Larry, that he wasn't in the best possible shape for this fight. Well, his his poundage or tonnage certainly showed that. And he's a he's a troubled guy, uh, a guy who's had serious drug problems, as we said earlier, which means that he really hasn't had a chance to get in shape. Emmanuel Stewart was exactly correct to wait a while and he would be there for the picking. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Jim Hall for the official particulars of this one. Ladies and gentlemen, winner of this WBC heavyweight title eliminator bout, at two minutes and 55 seconds of the fifth round, winner by knockout, Lennox Lewis. Lewis. So Lennox Lewis with a comeback victory eight months after the surprise loss to Oliver McCall and Lewis refurbishes some of his credentials, at least in the eyes of the people I'm working with here tonight, with this knockout effort against Lionel Butler. 248 pounds, you had to wonder whether he was in the best possible shape and ready to fight, and uh, George Foreman, I've got to say that the extra poundage didn't look all that bad on Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Lennox Lewis has got this punching power. All he needs is a little more confidence. This guy can rule a heavyweight division for a long time with that extra reach he has. Now, he's going to say at some point that he'd like to have a shot at George Foreman, too. Well, he's not old enough yet. <laughs> That's and one are, good excuse. There are lots of other people in line ahead of Lewis, to be honest, at this point, right? Well, right now, I think they are. But this guy, I'm glad to see that HBO is presenting some of the best heavyweights in the world. I couldn't have had a better time watching some of the best heavyweights tonight. I really enjoyed it. Well, and uh, positive signs for both Moore and Lennox Lewis, particularly for Lewis, Larry, who uh, had to banish, exercise, if you will, uh, some of the demons with that victory tonight. Yeah, and, and I think we ought to give some credit to Emmanuel Stewart. He's on a heck of a run. I mean, yeah. to bring back Evander Holyfield the way he did, to beat Bo, to bring back the man from no place who beat 
Lewis out of his championship and now to bring Lewis back that's that's a terrific achievement for a trainer one of the things that he wanted to do was to take him to the Kronk gymnasium up in Detroit and get him surrounded by some of that mean streets kind of stuff and Evander, uh, excuse me, Stewart said, I don't want this kid to be a chess player anymore. We all know that Lennox Lewis liked to play chess. But his real problem was, is that he was trying to checkmate his opponents before they were ready to be checkmated, ever since the Ruddick fight with that long right hand. And tonight we saw some mean streets in him, we saw some calculation in him, and we saw that he waited for the right moment to checkmate his opponent, and now, who knows, perhaps he'll be the king of the board again. Yeah, do you think the WBC is going to give him his title shot against McCall? I wouldn't put anything past the WBC because they are shameless. But having come here and announced that this is an eliminator fight, I don't know. I've seen in the past where sometimes the winner of an eliminator fight is himself eliminated if he looks too good. <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis might have committed that crime tonight.